What up GQ, Miguel here, I'm at the crib. We're about to go undercover on the internet. This is actually me. First up, Twitter. Let's see what the family's asking, let's see. Here we go, swipe. Nice little swipe action. Hey Miguel, when you coming out with another album, I miss you. I miss you too, man, I miss putting out music. I was just having this conversation. It's been a challenge, you know, trying to adjust to the times, to be honest with you, but I'm ready. So by the end of this year, expect another project. Boom. Do you have a list of songs that you want to experience live? I have a whole list. For instance, can you imagine being at a Miguel show and that bass from Anointed hits your chest? Ah, that's dope. I live for that high. I'm having concert withdrawals. I feel like we all are. I need live music. I need it. Yeah, same, same. Songs I would love to experience live. Man, I would love to experience any James Brown live. Anything Led Zeppelin. I saw Prince live when he was, when he was with us, in this dimension at least. There's a lot though, a lot of artists, but I feel you, I'm having concert withdrawals, performing and attending. So hopefully we can get back to that real soon. Posted, you know what I need? Another Miguel Janelle Monet collab. Man, Janelle, big shout out to Janelle. I miss Janelle, man. She's been killing it on film and TV though. So um, happy for her. I'd love to do another collab with Janelle, man. We should, we should try and make that happen. GQ, can we make that happen? Next one. So, Miguel auditioned to be Dro on Insecure HBO. <laughs> I had prepared and for whatever reason, I stayed late the night before. I'll never forget this. I stayed in studio the night before, super late, woke up late, rushed to the audition. And I think they could tell that I was sort of like out of it. So Issa, she's such a sweetheart. She's like, can we get you anything? I was like, some food. <laughs> And everybody started laughing. Needless to say, I didn't get the role. This is the homie. I love everyone over there. I love the show. So I'm actually really glad that I didn't get the role. My man that, that, that actually played Joe killed it. So there's that. Next one. Miguel and Nazanin are body, hair, and couple style goals. Yes or yes? I would say yes. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> it's all her though. It's all her. Man, goals, you should be your own goals first and foremost. I'm a firm believer that it's always about just doing it better, you know? Doing your best, bettering yourself, doing it better than you did the day before. That's a big one, but we, we also like to focus on showing up for ourselves in terms of, you know, meditation and making sure that we're in the right mind state to just deliver, to deliver on whatever it is that we're passionate about. So, you know, hopefully um, that helps you kind of reframe it. You know, we don't want to be your goals. We want you to be your goals. And hopefully we can keep reminding each other of what's possible and do it better day by day. Next one. How do I know that Miguel is a Scorpio? I don't know. Is it obvious? Is it obvious? I mean, I have two scorpions tattooed across my collarbone, so that doesn't make it hard to guess. But um, yeah, yeah, I'm very proud of my Scorpio tendencies. I like to think that I'm an evolved Scorpio though. I'm trying to grow out of any like jealous tendencies, any possessive habits. And I think that's been something that's been cool to learn, especially in my friendships and my relationships. It's been really cool to, to kind of grow out of some of the, the lower frequency vibes. But I, I do love it, that I'm very passionate about everything that I do. I love hard. I work hard. I fight hard. I believe big. I think that has a lot to do with my Scorpioness. Yeah, yeah. Very proud Scorpio here. All right, next one. Miguel and Rihanna collab, make it happen. I'm about that collab. I'm about that collab too. We've spoken a couple of times. The last time I saw Ri was actually in studio. What was it? I was in studio, I was working with Hit Boy, and that's this year, that's crazy. And we ran into each other at the studio. And you know, again, we just kind of like, yo, we have to do something. So I guess it's always just about timing and the right song, which means that it's inevitable. Next section, this is YouTube. The zoom function is perfect, okay. Am I the only one who thinks Miguel would be perfect fit to portray Prince in a biopic or is it just me? How do you how do you pronounce that word? Is it biopic or is it biopic? I don't know. Man, playing Prince. Prince already played Prince in Purple Rain, remember? I was raised on his music and I think he has always been sort of the epitome of an artist. No artist better exemplifies what true artistry means and is and, and the dedication and excellence levels. I don't think anyone better exemplifies that than Prince. And I will wager a lot to say that most artists would say the same. I think because of my respect for that, yeah, I don't, I don't know. But if we're talking about a hypothetical film, I'd be honored, honestly. I'm not saying I would actually do it. I'm just saying hypothetically speaking. 
I have questions about this album cover. How did they do that? Did his back get fucked up when he landed on the sand? Ha. Did his elbows get hurt? All right, fun fact, I'm actually laying on sort of like a bench, a really thin bench, and it was a bitch trying to like keep the pose. It's actually like a lot of core work. I'm really happy that I had worked out a couple weeks in advance and, and got some core work in because it was tough and it took us a while to get it right. So that and a little bit of Photoshop kind of gives a disappearance. Next. What does this song mean? And he's talking about funeral. One of my favorite things that Kurt Cobain said in an interview is like, I'm not gonna explain what the songs mean. It's not what it's about, you know? And I think one of the things that I've done in the past that I wish I didn't do was like explain the songs because it takes all the fun and the imagination and the ownership away from the listener. I think it's really cool to listen to a song and find your own meaning in it. This is also regarding funeral. I know music video for this masterpiece, and this is when it came out in 2019, which is crazy, but there is a video on the way. That's loading. Boom. Cora. Ha, what makes Miguel Singer so cool and chill? Man, ah, uh, I've got a big heart, strong-minded, but I'm also open-minded. I make what I want, I do what I want, and it always comes from the right place. I can admit when I'm wrong, and I like to have a good time. <laughs> yeah. Moving on. Wikipedia. Trip. Miguel was born and raised in San Pedro, Los Angeles. I was raised in San Pedro, yes, but I was born in Linwood, California, which is kind of a lesser known city. You kind of got to be from LA to know about Linwood, but that's where I was born. At a young age, Miguel was introduced to the older R&B his mother listened to and his father's musical tastes, including funk, hip hop, jazz, and classic rock. My mom, where she was listening more to artists like Stevie Wonder and The Temptations and anything that was coming out of Motown, my dad was like all over the place. He was listening to the Eagles and the Beatles and Jimi Hendrix, like Nirvana, the Fugees, P-Funk, and crazier bands like the Deftones, some punk bands. All that stuff kind of plays a lot into the music that I make, more so because there's really no boundaries. And I'm always kind of pulling from all these different sonic palettes and tones to kind of incorporate into my own music. Miguel cites musicians Prince, David Bowie, Jimi Hendrix, Freddie Mercury, Phil Collins, Donny Hathaway, B.I.G., Kanye West, Saul Williams, Queen, Usher, Pharrell Williams as influences. Yeah, it is pretty, pretty broad of a range of influences, but it's true. I look to songwriters like Alanis Morissette for songwriting and Bjork, Nina Simone. I've been kind of jumping back into like a lot of female writers and artists lately. Everything I didn't really get to jump into that wasn't a part of projected radio culture in the 90s, which is when I grew up, I'm kind of like revisiting. So a lot of that includes a lot of incredible female artists. So that's what I've been listening to lately and influenced by lately. Miguel played a Cuban American gangster in Ben Affleck's period crime drama, Live By Night. This is very true. He covered Beyonce's Crazy in Love for the theatrical trailers for Fifty Shades Darker. Also true. And I actually got to work with one of my like mentors, I would say, Dave Siddick on that song. But also I produced a song for Coco, Remember Me. That's on the soundtrack that won uh, an Academy Award, which is excellent, incredible to be a part of, you know, Disney's like, that's legendary. I also got to work on another song for a soundtrack on the Hunger Games series and a song I did with Lord. But yeah, there's a lot more. Miguel partnered with Revolve Impact and headlined Schools Not Prisons Tour, along with other musicians to spread awareness of mass incarceration throughout California. This is true. It was really awesome to work with Schools Not Prisons and I'm still supporting their work. Obviously a hot topic, especially considering the current temperature and, and unfortunate lives that have been lost. Children dying in these in these prisons. His music video for now was filmed in Adelanto, which is the location of California's largest immigration processing center, the Adelanto Detention Center. It was crazy to go there because when you're standing outside of it, it just looks like, you know, a huge warehouse and it's in the middle of the desert, a small town. Learning about the way that these jails are put up was really interesting. They often choose you know, locations that are remote in cities that have populations that are looking for work. They pretty much offer them jobs at these remote locations and also kind of place them there to stay out of the way and away from attention. It really changed a lot for me. It started a big shift in seeing what was possible when you have an audience. I think from then on, I've, I've been really keen on 
looking at how I can bring attention to things that, you know, really matter. Grateful for that experience, man. Miguel has said that transcendental meditation, correction, just meditation, not transcendental meditation, is the key to balancing his lifestyle. And they quote, it's good to take a breath from everything and just center yourself. That's the best way of describing it. I don't want to like misquote any science, but one of our, our normal reactions to stress is shallow breathing. Whether it's like physical stress or mental stress or emotional stress, we sort of respond in a more shallow way of breathing. And one of the easiest ways to sort of combat that and be able to sort of reassess and take a little more control, reframe things in a more present way is by catching yourself and watching your breath work and, and how and paying attention to how you breathe. And that's changed so much for me, just that one bit of sort of information. I learned it through meditation because it's a huge, huge part of getting into a more present place in your mind, separating yourself from the past or kind of looking into the future because the only thing we can do about anything happens right here in the moment. That's a really important one. Meditation, try it. Submit. Well, as we all know, the internet is undefeated. It was really dope to be undercover and see what the questions were and, and figure out whether or not the internet's got it right. And I have to say for the most part this time, the internet was right, but it's time for me to go. So I'm gonna let you guys have the rest of your day. I hope you're well, thank you for watching. Peace to GQ. I'm gonna get out of here, peace.